What was that about? She asked. I told her. She laughed. Though it had a double door making a narrow vestibule, like many theater buildings dating from before World War I, the Metropolitan had no real lobby. When I come in here, I said as we move behind the final row of seats through the reddish light at the back of the orchestra, I usually take a, a quick tour of the whole place just to see how things are looking. Here, that's down the aisle there and up over there. Then it's once around the balcony. She said, go on. So I did with Anna behind. When we finished our round of the orchestra and left the ground floor to walk up the steps to the balcony, I asked, how many guys did you see giving other guys head downstairs? Huh? She said, I saw three. Come on, not right out in the middle of the, oh, oh you're kidding me. Just then, two black kids dashed down the steps beside us. One glanced at Anna and whispered, uh-oh, fish. Fish was gay slang for women. But I don't think it registered with Anna, or indeed just then, with his friends two steps below. We came out at one end of the horseshoe to walk up beside the double pairs of seats, mostly empty. On my first circuit, I saw a thick-set man in workman's greens sitting by the balcony rail and gazing at the screen, an empty seat beside him. In his late 30s, older than Anna or I, he'd opened his pants and was fingering himself absently. At least a decade his senior, a slender man leaned by the wall, watching. In white shirt and dark vest, he stepped away to move toward the seated workman as we passed. Continuing me with me to the back, Anna commented softly, there are a lot of people in here walking around. There were. But since we'd come in, most of Anna's attention had been on the screen, whereas I, who had seen that week's offering already several times in at least two other theaters, had hardly glanced at it. I turned and started back. We reached the seated workman, still looking at the movie. His short-sleeved green shirt was unbuttoned now. The peak of his cap was turned to the side. The older man knelt between the workman's knees, head moving up and down over the lap. I sat in the empty seat beside him, and with one hand on her hip, one hand holding her wrist, I guided Anna bodily into the chair ahead of me. She sat, still looking at the screen. I said softly, back here. Twisting to look at me, she said, where, what? Just then the workman who, when I'd sat next to him, had made no response at all at my arm, as my arm had slid down by his, suddenly blinked, pulled his hands back on the chair arms and moved his whole body two inches forward. That's a girl? <laughs> the guy sucking raised his head and craned around below the seat back. It's okay, I said. Go on. <laughs> the workman looked at me. She want to do something? He turned to Anna. You want to do something? If you do, that's okay. The man between his legs still looked back. He held the workman's dark penis in his pale fist. Is this all right with you? He asked Anna. Looking down, Anna said, Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, go on. With, I think she found it surprising, a wink at Anna, the man on his knees went back to sucking. The workman's hand slipped forward again on the chair arms. Fifteen seconds later, the man sucking raised his head again. Again he held the workman. Softly he said, looking back and up at Anna, Do you uh, want some of this? His other hand moved to my lap as he spoke. I'll do your friend if you want, and you can have this one. Anna said, that's all right. I I'm just watching. Oh, all right, he whispered, as if reassuring her he'd keep a mutual secret. His hand slipped from my pants, and he went back to sucking. When the workman came, hey, thanks, thanks, thank you, one had gone to the man sucking, the other had gone to me, and the third to Anna. He buttoned his shirt, stepped over me, patted Anna's shoulder, and was gone. Getting up from the floor, 
I helped him, and Anna offered a steadying hand, the older man stopped to lay a finger on Anna's forearm. Did that look good to you, sweetheart? Uh, yes, she said, a little uncertain. The man turned to give my arm a squeeze, then winked at me. Stepping among the other men who'd stopped to watch, he whispered, good, and was gone in the other direction. Anna and I spent another hour in the theater. Once she sat on the balcony rail and watched two more guys work out in the seats beside her. For a while, on the same side of the balcony at the end, she stood near a group of men, including one of the kids we'd passed on the stairs, and watched me trade off doing and getting done with a guy in squeaking leather, pants, and jacket. Once, during a lull, as several other of the observers had been doing from time to time, she, watched, she reached in to feel his erect cock, and with his sudden frown, though he did not pull back, I and Anna both realized that only then had he seen she was a woman. Anna let go and stepped quickly back, though. Before we left, she told me, I'm gonna walk around by myself for five minutes. When, three minutes and 38 seconds later, by my watch, she rejoined me at the back of the orchestra, I asked, everything okay? Yes, she nodded. Did anything happen? I was quite as curious as to what she had seen as she had been to see it. Well, one guy made a pass at me, if you could call it a pass in here, I mean. He asked me would I let him eat me only I could tell he really thought I might say yes, and when I said, uh, no thank you, he smiled, shrugged, he did look sad, and walked away. I laughed at her surprise, and we pushed through the dull gold drapes hanging across the inner door. When we were outside, I said, so, what did you think? The first thing she said was, there really were guys giving other guys blowjobs downstairs in the orchestra. I thought you were kidding when you told me that. I thought it was all going to be going on in, in dark corners, eyes befuddled by the full light, by the trees and people, and the streets themselves, the garbage along the curb, the bars and clothing shops and kids and parents moving quickly about. We strolled back down 14th Street, dazzled in the ordinariness of day. It was interesting. Then she added, it was more relaxed than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be more frenetic, uh, people just grabbing each other and throwing them down in the shadows and, and having their way. But it was so easygoing, and you didn't tell me. She paused. Didn't tell you what? That so many people say no, and that everybody pretty much goes along with it. I guess, I said, when so many people say yes, the no's just don't seem so important. <laughs> well, there are still more no's than yeses. Between five to one and eight to one, I'd estimate. She laughed. Would you go again? She thought. Then, with her black curly hair, she gave a small, definite head shake. No. Why not? Well. I was scared to death. Was there anything in there that scared you? She thought again, no. Finally, she said, the people weren't as pretty as I thought. Not sure what she meant, I raised an eyebrow. The people in the movies, she explained, the actors on the screen, they weren't even as good looking as the people walking around the theater. Oh, I said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you.